joining us for one last time. One last time. Before we go to the Q&A portion, anything you want to say before we, we start? No, I, I, I think it's wise. Well, I, I should have said yes. Uh, <laughs> Obviously, it's it's um, you know it's been a great ride, and I think for for me it's it's um, it's something that I love to do, and and you know I, I think as you look back on it and, and realize all the things that you've been able to be a part of and be um, fortunate to be somewhat successful at, it's it's been it's been fun. Um, obviously, I'm not going far, so um, I guess I'll just be sitting on the other side of the table um, asking the questions. But it's been a great ride, and, and appreciate everything that that's. Um, you guys have, have done for me, and, and um, whether they're good questions or bad questions, I guess doesn't really matter. But um, it's been it's been fun. I appreciate what you guys do. All right, we're now going to go to questions for Kevin. If you have one, raise your hand. We're going to work to get a mic to you. Who would like to kick us off? All right, we'll go over here to Zach. Zach Sherry, Elmanascar.com. Kevin, um, obviously a lot of speed here at, at, back in the spring. Have you? Um, do you feel like you guys could go out there and, and win this race on, on Sunday? And it's, it's brought off into the sunset with uh, with a win. Well, we did run good, and I think as um, you know, you look back at just the the history of, of everything that, that we've done here. It's been it's been okay. So. Um, you know we've been we've been rather hit or miss this year, but I think um, you know this is a place. No matter how your season is going, you come to with the expect expectations of of running at the front of the pack. So hopefully, hopefully that's what we can do. All right, for our second question, we'll come up front to Holly. Hi, Kevin. Holly Kane with the NASCAR Wire Service. So now this is it. That's it. Does it? feel any different? Are you taking things in a little bit differently? What makes this weekend maybe a little bit more different than all of the ones leading up to it? Yeah, you know, I think for, for me, um, all the weeks leading up to uh, this particular one were really not that hard. I think, you know, this week was this week was, was a little more difficult just because it is the, it is the last week and, and you know, with, with your guys and the people and, and everything that, that, that you do is, is actually coming to an end. I don't think up until this point, you know, I don't think anybody really thought it was real, and, and this week it's it's pretty real. So, um, so you know, I think that this week has been definitely different than than everything leading up to this, just because of the fact that there isn't a next week. Um, there's been a next week up until this week. So, look, it's 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 very different. Um, you know, the, the things that we that we have to do going forward, um, but it's all planned out and. I think as as I talked to, to Dale and, and uh, Dale Jr. and just you know he was in a very similar situation, whereas you know the TV piece of it was planned out, the race team piece of it's planned out. We have a management company, we have golf cart stores. All those things are already functioning, and I think it would be um, much different if you weren't closing the book. And you know I think for for me I feel very fortunate to to be able to to open open the book and obviously. Our first chapter was a, was a little bit different than, than most people's, um, but it was it's it's the time that that we chose to, to be able to say, okay, this is it, and, and this is going to be you know the, the last week, and, and you know coming to coming to Phoenix and, and racing here for the last time. Um, when you used to come here and, and race just for a hobby, right? And, and you look forward to, to coming to this particular racetrack on Cup weekend. In, in February for the Copper Classic every year, as a, as a West Coast racer, that's that's what you did. So, it is it is a little bit different. It's a lot different um, than the weeks past because there isn't a next one. Do you think kids feel the finality of it? I feel it probably a little bit more, but does Piper? I mean, do they realize it's the last drivers meeting where Daddy's wearing a driver's suit? I think. It's yeah, you know, I think I think Piper. You know, for for weeks, Piper's been like, Dad, why do you have to go to the next one? You're already retiring. <laughs> so she's she's pretty much over it. Keelan's terrified uh, just because of the fact that he knows that I'm going to be a way more racist than what I was before, and he knows that I'm going to be um, I'm going to be all over him, um, you know, a lot more than I am right now. Right now, he can he can go off and, and do his thing and, and race, and, and Dad's not there to critique every single move that that he makes. So that party's over, and. Um, but you know, I think it's it's fun. Um, Piper told Cheddar earlier. She said, she said he asked her. He said, uh, so 
What are you looking forward to the most? You said, well, Dad's going to come watch me race, so that'll be fun. Alright, we're going to Jazz Club. Kevin, when, when you came in, um, you know, the, the weekends were longer and you guys had to go test more often. Um, but you also didn't have, like, a lot of the midweek stuff, you know, like whether it's looking at SMT or maybe video, things like that. Um, and also a lot of drivers now, it seems like, I mean, you, you pretty much had consistent sponsors, but a lot of them have more sponsors that ask for more appearances. So, like, do you think overall that drivers when you first came in were busier and had more on their plate than today or is it the opposite and today's drivers have way more on their plate it's just different and i i, I say that not trying to be a smart aleck it, it's the, the the demands on the time are not as much as they used to be because i just i don't think i really think since you know 2009 when everything crashed and covid um the, the demands on your time from an appearance standpoint, from a testing standpoint, and days at the racetrack are much, much less than, than what they used to be. I think it's the it's the tedious work that, that comes with um, the details that go into the video and the data and everything that, that comes with that. And really from the driver's standpoint, you're a part of an equation and you have to be pretty pretty involved in, in everything that's going on to, to be able to understand the ins and outs of the equation to be able to make a difference. Otherwise, you're a hindrance to really the whole system and you never really get anywhere, right? You, if they hit on something, then you have a little bit of success, but it's never going to be consistent um, unless you really understand how to be a part of that equation. So um, I, don't, I don't think that there's, to me, it's a lot easier than it used to be, just because you don't have to go to, to do so many sponsor appearances. So even though you have more sponsors, it's it, there's still not a, a huge demand on your time like there used to be from, from an appearance standpoint, um, just because of the ways that, it, it, the way that, that companies utilize your time is just much different because of, of the way that they do events and, and things uh, compared to how they used to do it with free for all marketing accounts, um, budgets that, that you just, at dinners and different things all the time. So, um, but I, I still believe that uh, one of the biggest challenges that many of our young drivers have is, is really time management and trying to get that, that circle of life and, and balance to make yourself realize that you're really not that busy and, and figure out how to do a lot more things in a short amount of time and still um, be able to function. So a lot of it just comes with structure and organization. And I think that's, that's one thing we stress a lot to our young guys is, hey, how do we how do we get your circle of life in balance so you can do more? Because you're really not doing that much. It's not that hard. All right, Nate. Uh, Nate Ryan on NBC Sports Center Club. Um, the end of your career is not just like the end of your career, it's also sort of an end of an era for NASCAR. Um, generationally, there have been six champions who were born in the 1970s. Uh, Gordon, Johnson, Stewart, Kenseth, Kurt Busch, and yourself, and you're the last one to hang it up. So, and not just those guys, but Carl Edwards, Dale Jr., you mentioned, you know, Ryan Newman. There are a lot of great drivers from the 1970s, from like the Gen X sort of generation. So I'm wondering, like, have you thought about that at all? Or is there any sort of sense of pride about what you and your contemporaries, your peers, have accomplished as it comes to it? Well, I think when, when you name that list, it's a, it's a group of guys that came in at a great time because you got to race against the guys that were just ending their careers in the you know in the early 2000s late 90s um, and then you got to go through a, a new generation of guys that you came up with and I guess there's I don't know how many there are but there's a there's a number of us that went through almost 20 years of it together and you really blocked out a whole generation in between for the most part, just because you had so many guys that were so good uh, and able to be successful, but we also came through. Um, we also came through at a time when the sport was just out of control with money uh, from a sponsorship standpoint, and all the team owners were looking for the next great driver. Uh, so they started their Bush Series teams, and everybody had a Bush Series team, and so we were at this fortunate time when when the, the Cup Series team owners were just looking for anybody that might have a chance and you could find funding to fund that program with all you had to do is just say you were starting a program and you'd have 
two or three opportunities for, for sponsorship. So, um, and that's how it was really as you went through for, for me. We, when, when we decided that we were gonna go cup racing, we had three sponsors and we had to decide which one we wanted. And that was, that was at a very unique, unique time in the sport. And, and I think um, I'm very fortunate to have raced in the you know, previous generation to come through with the guys that I did. And, and now, really for me, I'm in a fortunate spot to be able to see the whole next generation starting. Um, and you have some really young guys that are in their early 30s, late 20s, uh, mid 20s. Um, and now I get to take that and have raced against most all those guys that are be here for a long time and go up in the TV booth and I already know them all and have raced against them and have a relationship with them. And so um, it's just a, we came through it at a, at a our, my generation of, of racers came through at a very unique time that was just really fortunate to, um, to get to race against the previous generation, my generation and the future generation um, to, to see all those changes in cars and tires and racers and styles of racing and, and we went from trial and error to simulators and, and simulation and all eye racing and everything that, that comes with the sport now and, and when when we did that before you just go to the racetrack and you you cut the cross member out and you drill holes in the, in the frame and uh, you know you just you, you just tested and tested and tested and tested at the track and, and now you don't do it that way at all so um, but that's one thing I've always whether it was my race teams or the race team that I have now, uh, it's evolve or die, right? Because this is an evolution process that, that is never gonna end. Um, because it is, there are, there are engineers and smart people and um, you always have to keep your head up and your eyes open or you're gonna miss something and get left behind. And you know, I think with some of the generation of guys that, that were going out when we were coming in, it was, they were very stuck on, these are the springs that we need to run in the car you can't do this and you can't do that and they quickly got left behind and, and to me I remember that like it was yesterday and, and you look back at those guys and you're like man if they would have just kind of just followed the evolution of the sport and, and let it come to them they'd have still driven it fine they just wouldn't have known what springs were in the car and what shocks were on the car and where it was going to go next and whether it was high or low it still it still went around the racetrack it just went around the racetrack faster um, but that's what we do and you know if you if you the, the days of, of knowing everything that's in your car and knowing how it works that you almost need to forget that because you're just interrupt, interrupting the process of, of all the smart people that, that work on the car and car to make it go faster and find something new and make a make a better part or piece and, and so um, there's just a lot of things that have, that have changed and I love that part of it I love the evolution of of watching it change and, and that's always been something that I've taken pride in and being able to, to be a part of that change and, and still be successful at, at what we did. Is the next generation in good hands? The next generation is, you know, I think it's just it's just a different, um, I think it is. And I think, I think with, um, you know, I think um, guys like Joey Lagano are gonna be great leaders. Uh, they already are. You, you see some of the younger guys start to speak up in, in the meetings, and I can't wait to continue to be a part of those those meetings as, as we go forward and, and listen to it evolve and grow and uh, change and, and see who who the, the new leaders become and and because that's just the, that's the process and that's how that's how it works and um, there's a lot of a lot of really good racers and, and now. You know, I think you'll see guys evolve into into leaders that, that you might not have expected, and, and so, yeah, I mean that'll be fun for for everybody to watch and, and learn. But um, you've also got some guys that have been here for a while that'll that'll do a good job. All right, we're gonna go to Jenna. Kevin, Jennifer, and Hey, everything you've gone through, learned good, bad, and different. What do you not want Keelan and Piper to do? Where do I not what? What do you not want? Everything you've learned, everything you've done and experienced, what, what, what do you not want Keelan and Piper to do? Well, the one thing that I tell Keelan is, I always tell him, I'm, I'm like, hey, we'll, we'll get into some sort of disagreement of, of why you should do something or why you shouldn't do something. And I'll always tell him, he'll say, well, you did this or you did that. And I said, 
I'll tell him that's exactly why I'm sitting here telling you not to do that. If you just shut up and listen, I'll make you better. <laughs> it's not very hard, right? I've already done, I've already been down this road and I've already made this mistake. And, and really that's, that's one of the great advantages that we have where, you know, from, from the management side is if you'll just listen, I'm not telling you this is how you have to do it, but just listen to me. And then you take it and you evolve from there, but don't, don't make the simple mistakes. And I think, um, you know, from, from Piper's standpoint, she's still trying to figure it all out. And, you know, but, but Keelan's pretty easy because he's a lot like me. Um, he, he's, he's, he's a lot like me in the, in the way that he acts and things that he does, and things that he says, but, um, you know, he's, he for me is, is very coachable because of the fact that I know his next move. Like it's really simple. So, you know, I think for, for him, if he'll just listen and not make some of the same mistakes and just have a better starting point, then he can take it and, and evolve from there. Um, and if we can make his sister just be in charge of everything, she will definitely take charge. <laughs> so that, that seems pretty easy. If, if um, you know, if, if, if it were me, I, w I would just say, you know, I, I would, before I had kids, I would say, I don't ever get involved in racing. You don't want to do it. It's not the lifestyle that you want to live. And then you have kids and you look around and you realize, man, this is really what my life is all about. I love racing. And that really came from watching Keelan race and watching him grow to love the sport and watching the other parents and the other kids and, and everything that they did um, was all about racing because they loved going to the racetrack and it brought them together. And that's really what, I mean, that's what I've done my whole life. You just get, you get in this, you get in this mode where you walk in the racetrack, you've got your head down, you walk to your hauler, you put your suit on, you walk, walk from the hauler to the, to the car, and from the car to the hauler, and from the hauler home. Um, and I can't wait to walk in the racetrack with my head up and just look around because I'm, I really have never done that. So it's, um, you know, I think for, for them is, is probably the best advice I can give them is to, is to try to have fun um, because it's not always going to be fun. Uh, there's always going to be something that's hard, and, and in order to be good at this, it's not going to be it's not going to be fun most of the time. Um, so I, I don't I don't know if that answers your question, but you know, I think he likes to listen to anybody but me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, but he listens, and you know, I think as as he he listens, but doesn't want you to think he's listening, which I'm the same way. So. It's fine, but you know, I think for for me, I've learned that I don't need to be the coach. I need to coach through the coach, put him around the people that that I can trust with what I think is the right way to teach the right methods. Because you're going to get a lot further. So that that to me is a better strategy. Thanks to Jeff Bird. All right, apologies. We are not going to get to all the questions. We probably could spend an entire hour in here talking with Kevin. Um, so Kelly, I believe you have something for Kevin as we wrap here. But obviously, we don't want to make you late for your final practice session. But uh, hopefully, you'll spend a little bit of time with us on Sunday once you and I get up. Thank you, Amanda. Kevin, um, I'm here on behalf of the NBA. You've won our Driver of the Year Award two, three, four, seven times, I believe it is. Um, our members over the last couple weeks wanted to put something together for you. It is a congratulations on a Hall of Fame career. And now welcome to the dark side of being one of us. <laughs> There's also two very important pieces of things in here. We have, uh, we wanted to be the first ones to prevent, to present you with a media hard card instead of a driver hard card. Uh, you might want to look on the back though. There's a disclaimer that I don't know if this is actually going to get you access to anything. Yeah. And then we've also stuck in here an application to join the NMPA. <laughs> we know you're good for it, but prompt is is appreciated when it comes to your $60. So again, congratulations. <laughs>